the 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 green belt is a is a large swath of of land and they aren't saying are they that uh there's no more green belt and uh housing can go anywhere they aren't saying that are they aren't they aren't they choosing specific areas that uh are adjacent to the urban boundaries uh, and saying, okay, in this particular area, uh, the green belt's got to go back up. But in fact, they're adding to the green belt uh, in in its totality, aren't they? Yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, I mean, that that is their message. But let's just wade into that for a second. So they took seventy four hundred acres out of the green belt, and they're adding in uh, nine thousand. So you know, there's. On the surface, that sounds oh net gain. Um, you know what's wrong with that? So let's let's dig into that. So the areas that they're adding, um, uh, uh, the majority of them are what's called urban river valleys. So these are areas within uh, our cities. So think of the green belt as kind of north of the GTA, and there's these rivers like along a Dufflin's Creek or the Rouge or um, the Don or the Humber. And uh, a lot of those lands are publicly owned because a lot of them flooded during her, Hurricane Hazel. So we turned them into conservation areas uh, because the houses that were there all, all got washed away and a lot of people died. So we decided it would be a good idea to turn those into public land. So these areas that are added are already in public ownership. None of the private lands in those valleys are being added to the green belt. So the net uh, impact in terms of um, slowing development, protecting new lands is zero. Um, the other chunk of land that is out by Aaron um, uh, actually has a bunch of development in it already, has two hamlets and a bunch of uh, rural estate development. So the, the net gain there is, is very low. And then lastly, lastly but uh, probably most importantly on a policy level, is that once government says they're going to start opening the green belt and taking lands out, it sets off a wave of, of landowner speculation. So farmland needs to be affordable for farmers. But once the developers know that if they go have a quiet conversation with someone at Queens Park, they can get their land taken out of the green belt, then all of the values go through the roof and it becomes impossible for it to stay as agricultural land. And then uh, just the last point I'll make is that the assertion that these lands are uh, all serviced and waiting for development and therefore makes sense to take out of the green belt is just not true. Uh, in particular, I point to the, the letter that came in from Durham region last week saying that the, the largest chunk of land to be taken out of the green belt, and that is the Duffins Rouge uh, Agricultural Preserve, which is like 70% of the entire land area to come out of the green belt, that it has no services whatsoever, no plans to build any in it. And it's going to be very, very difficult to see any housing go forward on that property at all. So, which makes sense because it's been legally protected as agricultural land for years. So, why would it have any services in it? And and that that that's that's part of uh, what I, I want to get into is the agricultural land. Uh, and don't they need some stability in knowing whether their land is going to be developed? in the future, uh, whether it's going to be development land or whether it is actually going to be farmland and it allows them then to continue uh, with their agricultural efforts. Uh, and I guess it's, it's not just the farms, it's all the ancillary um, uh, uh, aspects of it that go together uh, that knowing what is going to happen to the to the land uh, gives you some comfort and not knowing uh, causes you a great deal of concern. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture, National Farmers Union, Christian Farmers Union, they've all been very vocal about these changes. Um, we're losing about 319 uh, acres of farmland in Southern Ontario uh, every day, uh, be mostly because of development. And uh, we need some permanence, some sense that this best farmland in Canada and some of the best farmland in the world mm -hmm. isn't gonna disappear. Uh, incredibly important for food security, incredibly important economically. Um, farming is the largest industry in, in Ontario, and sometimes we forget about that. Um, 
it's uh, if you remove the land from the green belt or have the threat that it can be, it does cause this rise in property values. And um, you, know, you think, well, that'd be great if you're a farmer, but a lot of farmers uh, want to pass the land on to other farmers. They don't want their last crop to be houses. And uh, as soon as you unleash the, uh, the you know, the, the, the uh, land speculators, then it ends all of that and it makes it no longer financially possible to be purchased for agriculture.